Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are going to share another little activity with you today which is designing and making a boat. So this is a great activity to do to help you explore science, ideal for early years, key stage one um, children. So here's an example of the boat that we've made and I would like to give a, a shout out to a um, a lady who's developed a book which would be really good for you to actually purchase and the sailing boat is actually in this book so just a quick shout out to this lady Caroline Alliston who has written this book which is full of exciting um, STEM projects for you to do at home so just wanted to shout out because actually some of the techniques we're using today we've uh, borrowed from Caroline. So, first thing you might want to do before you start designing your sailing boat is carry out a scientific investigation. So what you need to understand in science, materials in particular, is what the material properties are. So I've got some materials here and before I start making my boat I'm going to actually experiment to work out what the properties are of those materials and what properties I need for my boat. So for my boat to stay on top of the water, the one property I need is I need it to float. So the first investigation you might do is test a sample of materials to test if they float or not. Now if they float, they're going to stay on top of the water. If they don't float, they're going to sink. So you might want to just find some materials around the home, such as paper. Get yourself a little pot of water place the material into the water and just observe it. So, at the moment that paper is floating, okay? So that floats. Let's have a go at plastic. Does a piece of plastic float or not? Okay, so the plastic is floating. Now we've got some wood. Now you could find like a lollipop stick. Okay, and then we've got some corrugated cardboard, which I've used here. And then we have got some um, polystyrene. Now this material, as stated in Caroline's book, you can find it at the bottom of um, pizzas. So if you buy a pizza from the supermarket, this material can be found on the bottom. But you might not have this at home. So I'm just observing these materials to see if they float. Now, at the moment all of those materials float so I could make a boat from any of those materials. Okay, a bit of fabric. Now I'm going to cut this fabric down a little bit because it's a bit big. Now to make this a fair test, really your material samples should all be the same size. I'm just going to take a bit of fabric and pop that on the water as well. Now, okay, so all of those materials float. Now, the other property you might need to think about when you're making a boat is you need the material to be waterproof. Now, how do we know if something is waterproof? If I hold the material up, you can see the water on the material surface. If the uh, water drips off the material entirely, that means it's waterproof. So if you hold it up and the material runs off the material, and doesn't absorb into the material, we know it's waterproof. So this material here, the water runs off, none of the material is absorbed into the material, so we know it's waterproof. Now let's have a look at the wood. Okay, so the wood, okay, now it's running off the material, but actually some of the um, water is absorbed slightly, but it's not absorbed very much, just a slight it's slightly absorbed into the surface, so that's wood. So would that be appropriate to make a boat from? Now let's have a look at the paper. So the paper, okay, you can feel now that the paper has gone soggy because the water is absorbed into the paper. So paper is not waterproof, so that one's not waterproof, that one is waterproof. This one is not entirely waterproof, so I'll pop that into the middle. So. We don't really want to make a boat out of soggy paper. However, we could do something to the paper. Now, you can see now the plastic has sunk. So if I pick the plastic out, it is waterproof, okay, but it didn't float. However, some boats are made from plastic, but it's the shape 
that's created that allows it to float. So this particular plastic wouldn't be ideal for making a boat, but actually some of our boats that we use have been made uh, from a mixture of plastics. So we'll come on to that, but that is waterproof. It just didn't float. So we'll pop that here, didn't float. And then the corrugated cardboard, you can see the water has absorbed into the cardboard and it started to fall apart. So that is not waterproof. And then the fabric, okay, the water is absorbed. So out of these options, the best option for making a boat would be that. Yeah, the polystyrene. However, I don't think everyone's got that material at home. So, cardboard is readily available. But what can we do to make it waterproof? What could we put on the surface to protect it to make it waterproof? Have a little think. So, let's move this water out of the way. And I'm going to show you how you're going to make a sailing boat. Okay. Now, we are going to use the polystyrene and we're going to use the cardboard. So we've got a comparison. So the materials that you need are material for the bottom of your boat. Now the bottom of the boat that goes into the water is known as the hull. So the hull is the part of the boat that goes into the water. So this is the part that needs to be waterproof. This part on top is known as the deck. And this part here is the sail. Now the sail is really important to get your boat moving. So when this goes into the water, we need a form of energy to for, uh, push against the sail to make it move. And that form of energy is air. So you can simply blow into the sail to push that along. Or you could create air using a fan. So, that's the sail. And as you can see, we've got the sail here attached to this pole, which is known as a mast. And then we've used some foam to place the sail in securely. So, that's a simple sailing boat. Now, there are lots of ways we can make it waterproof. So to make it waterproof, you could use a wax crayon on top of the surface to create a sealant to stop the water getting at the card. Or, you can use sticky tape, which if you were to put some sticky tape in water, it is waterproof, and you can cover the bottom of your boat, the hull, to, to make it waterproof. So, once you've got your materials, the materials we're going to use are corrugated cardboard and polystyrene, just to give you an idea of what you could use at home. For the mast, we're using kebab skewers. Now, when you carry out this activity, you must be doing this with an adult. Um, when you're using skewers, you need to be really super careful of this sharp end. We are going to need this sharp end to place the sail into the base of the boat. So we'd need the sharp end, so you need a skewer. And then for your sail, you can use cardboard or paper. So the difference between cardboard and paper is the paper is thinner and the cardboard is thicker, so it's your choice. So on this one, we use paper. So for the next design, we're going to use cardboard. So next decision, once you've got your materials, and once you've got your tools, you should have a ruler, pencil, scissors. Um, I've got a craft knife, but you don't need that. So we'll pop that to the side in a minute. The next thing you need to do is think about what shape would be the best shape for my boat to sail across the seven seas as fast as possible. So the shape that I've used here is a triangle. What I'm going to do is use that same, that same size, but I'm going to change the shape. So the next shape I'm going to try is a square. I'm going to compare a triangle to a square. So the triangle was measured at 20 centimetres. So measuring is a really important skill. If you want to become a designer or an engineer, it's really important that you can measure. So I'm using the edge of my ruler to draw a straight line and I'm measuring 200, 20 centimetres, sorry. That's me working in a different measurement there, millimetres. 
So I'm measuring 20 centimetres square. And this is where you can get an adult to help you learn and understanding how to measure and how to use a ruler. Once you've measured the shape, you can then cut the, cut the shape out with some scissors. And again, this is a skill that you need to develop, okay? If you're finding it difficult, ask an adult to help you. Now, when you're putting along the card, you'll get to a point where your scissors will get stuck. So just take that edge off there. That will allow your scissors some more room. Okay, so there's my shape. So, cut that there. I haven't cut that very well. Now it's quite tricky to cut corrugated cardboard, so it's quite a tricky material, quite a tough material to cut. And again, here we go. So there's my square. Pop my scrap material down. <clears throat> I might need it. So there's your base. Once you've got your base, what you then need is something to hold the mass. So we're using foam that we've got from Hobbycraft. So you could find some foam, I'm sure in old packaging. So we are going to cut a block of foam. To use on the bottom of our boat. Now, I'm attaching that to the bottom of the boat using a glue gun. But if you haven't got a glue gun, you could use blue tack or you could use double sided tape. But a small blob of glue gun, and you've got to think about where you need this to go. Now, I'm using a low melt glue gun. which means that there's not a lot of heat needed to heat this and turn it into a, a liquid. And it means that if I do touch it, I will have a slight burn, but it won't be as, um, as bad a burn if I was to use a normal glue gun. So there's my block of foam. I now need to make a sail. So this time I'm going to use the same shape, which is a rectangle, but I'm going to use cardboard instead of paper. So using your scrap card you need to put a hole at the top and a hole at the bottom. So it's really important that you don't put your hand underneath the skewer when you're poking a hole. So place your material onto a piece of cardboard, hole at the top in the middle and a hole at the bottom in the middle. And then you are simply going to thread, be careful that your finger is out of the way, the skewer and this is where an adult will need to help you. There you go. And then if your mast is too tall, <coughs> using some scissors, you can cut your skewer, create a small dent and snap away from your eyes, not towards your eyes, away from your eyes. And there you have it. Now, which boat do you think will be faster on the water? Do you think it will be this that's a square or this that's a triangle? Which one do you think will be faster? So that's using corrugated cardboard, but remember you do need to make the hull, the part that goes into the water, waterproof. So you could use wax crayon, you can cover, uh, cover it with sellotape, anything shiny that's going to protect this from absorbing the water because we know that corrugated card floats, but we know that it's not waterproof. So I hope you have fun, I hope you enjoy making your sailing boat and the final thing that you might want to add onto your sailing boat is a flag. So using some spare material you might want to quickly cut a flag. Now this activity I do a lot with all of my STEM stars in the, sc in the schools that I work 
and they really really enjoy it so I'm hoping there are some of them out there listening that might want to have a go at doing this again at home so once you've got your flag you can pop a piece of sellotape onto the edge of the flag and place that around the mask like so there you go okay so there is your sailing boat okay hope you have fun thank you for listening if you did enjoy that please like and subscribe to our page and look out for the new activities that we are launching every single week also look out for the competition there is one running at the moment uh, deadline is the end of May um, and there is a prize for the winning uh, entry so thanks again for listening we hope to see you soon and uh, thank you for now goodbye <laughs>